is there our ancient uh, super diet which they want us to forget and disremember? Why are they scared of our happy, healthy lives and sweet old age? Due to our black African super genes, we are under severe food and drink attack. Without a doubt, Asian Africans ate far much better than all other races put together. Unfortunately, today black people seem to ditch that way and adopt the non-African diet. Mental illness, identity crisis and other woes follow. What happened? How did the Asian Africans eat so well? Uh, we seem to have followed nata foods. Natural diet. You can see there. It's natural uh, diet. How did the Asian Africans eat so well? What did they really eat? What was their daily food? Did they drink beer daily? What kind of beer? Yes. Bantus in Egypt and abroad, because of their immunity, were able to move across and even to be adopted in transatlantic slave trade and survive. And they had the genetic history of Bantu speaking people with great immunity, lactose tolerance, and as Bantu speaking people migrated across Africa, they acquired advantages, genetic mutations through admixtures. Bantu speaking people contributed 30% of the African genome of present day African Americans. We had all our livestock. We have all wild animals. We even tamed and used lions. And for all that, we were the greatest and mightiest people. Yes, there were diseased mummies and ancient skeletons because of meats. Yes, what about dairy, sugars, sweets, meat, cannabis? Fish, it is clear the rich, the elite, the privileged dined off meat, exotic and local, fruits and vegetables, and honey and sweetened cakes, enhanced by the finest of wines. The masses usually had a monotonous and monogenetic diet of bread, fish, beans, onions, and garlic, washed down with sweet soupy. Yes, our ancient ancestors had several types of meat which they ate across the whole of Africa, especially in Egypt. Cattle, a beef, a sheep and goat was common and eaten by the rich. They even went further to eat ducks, geese and other four which were eaten by the poor. Animals we would consider exotic were also eaten such as gazelles and antelopes. Many types of seafoods were avoided because of religious stigma. Black people invented agriculture. You can see they invented the plow, they tamed the oxen, the cattle, they invented irrigation, this is the shaduf, they invented tools, this is a circle which they are harvesting crops. Yes, empires began in Africa. 2000 BC to 500 BC, ancient Africa had all these kingdoms, Ghana Empire, no civilization, so civilization, Oksum civilization, and Kijama civilization, as well as Monomotapa. Most empires in Africa, including ancient Egypt, had the five major components of civilization. Cities, specialized workers, government, uh, record keeping, and advanced technology, which we all know ancient Egypt had. You see, this is the picture taken in 1915 of Egypt. These are black people. What happened? Where are they? Where are these people? This photo was taken around 1915. It shows the flooding of the Nile River, which happens each year and makes the land in Egypt good for farming. If not for the Nile, Egyptian civilization would not have developed as it is the only major source of water in the desert region. As you can see, 
it's quite clear all civilizations began along our rivers in Africa. A 10 year old age was superior and was the supreme goal. Our ancestors regarded the attainment of this age, of old age, as evidence of special divine favor and the reward for blameless behavior. This is a supreme goal and it is still a supreme goal. Old age, old people were respected for their experience and wisdom and their wise advice received close attention. The instruction of Annie says, never remain seated if a man older than yourself is standing. I've heard that somewhere. Not all aged well. Of old people in the old or middle kingdoms and in other parts of Africa, the instructions of Taho Tepi, which date to the old kingdom, augurs well on the old age. This is the black philosopher who wrote the instructions of Taho Tepi. Tahu Tupo, Tahu Tupo. Age is here. Old age arrived. Feebleness come. Weakness grows. Child like one sleeps all day. Eyes are dim. Ears deaf. Strength is waning through weariness. The mouth silence speaks not. The heart void recalls not the past. The bones ache throughout. That's old age of another version in ancient Egypt, which we can avoid. Since our empire's demise, we are indeed in trouble. We have been colonized and forced to disremember some super diets. Ancient Egypt, general principles, this is the culmination of the four civilizations that were there before Egypt ro rose up. Preoccupation with life and desire to continue living after death. This is a major goal. After life resembles an improved earthly life. This is our hope. Continuing bodily existence through mummification, attempts to recover bodies, fear of being eaten by animals. Yes, you should be buried. And ideal lifespan, minimum 100 years. Fantastic. We are now eating all sorts of animals and seafoods to the horrible detriment of our lives. Study reveals that ancient Egyptians were vegetarians. By studying the hair of ancient Egyptians, a team of French scientists were able to determine that Egyptians ate a primarily vegetarian diet on a very consistent basis. You can find this on infinite waters and you can look for this on this our website that is given here. Now, by analyzing the carbon atoms in mummies that had lived in Egypt between 3,500 before Common Era and 600 after Common Era, the French research team were able to determine that the ancient Egyptians were largely vegetarian. Even Europeans adopted this form of eating from black people. From the beginning of recorded history, we can see that vegetables have been the natural food of human beings, the herbs. Early Greeks went to Egypt to learn and adopted this uh, diet. Ancient Egyptian priests never ate meat. Many Greek philosophers such as Plato, Diogenes, and Socrates advocated vegetarianism. Today, many famous writers, artists, scientists, philosophers, and eminent men are vegetarian and were vegetarian. Pythagoras, Shakespeare, Benjamin Franklin, Bertrand Russell, Albert Einstein, George Bernard Shaw all adopted this. Even Steve Jobs. Meat eating is just an acquired habit. In the beginning, we were not born with a desire for meat. Flesh eating people cut off their inner seed of mercy. This is a philosophy of life. Is meat healthy? Cancer fears over beef. Fears about eating beef from cattle pumped up with growth hormones have been raised by a British government expert. John Ferrell said that there was alarming evidence it could trigger breast and other cancers bring forward puberty in girls and increase the ri risk of genital abnormalities in boys. Mr. Vera, a member of Government Advisory Committee, is 
so concerned that he has defied an official attempt to gag him. He points to a rise in rates of breast and prostate cancer in the United States where two-thirds of cattle receive hormones. These all meat causes cancer. All meat has blood and mucus which causes sicknesses and cancer. Remember, blood transfusion can also occur through eating meat. There was disaster and there is disaster if you mix human blood with animal blood. This is what our ancestors used to eat bread they baked in ovens. Natural fruits they harvested from the trees. Watermelon, which was the supreme fruit in Africa, which originated in Africa with black seeds, eaten both seeds grinded and drank as tea and used and sprinkled in soups, gave them superior immunity and health. Great doctor, Dr. Sebi said, starch is poison too. Starch is not a food. Starch is a chemical. Anything that God has made has no starch. This is what Dr. Sebi said. Starch only arises when two plants are cross-pollinated, hybridized. Starch is the binding agent used to combine these two plants that would otherwise never mesh together. That's what Dr. Sebi said. These starch-based plants such as wheat, corn, which is derived from the South American grain, the Teosente, potatoes, etc. cannot send their roots into the ground and convert solid rock minerals into a liquid digestible food. Only natural, organic, non-cloned from seed plants, carbon-based, not starch-based plants can convert minerals from a solid to a liquid. This process is known as iotrophoresis. According to Edward Schultz, hybrids can only absorb moisture, water, and sunlight. This is what the great Dr. Sebi taught. Starch is poisonous. Consequences that come from consuming starch for decades include bad eyesight, bad joint arthritis, bad posture, and bad hearing. Bread is starch. Avoid starch. The ancient super diet they don't want you to remember, which they want you to disremember. Once free to choose what you must eat, you must fast regularly. Whole system detox to neutralize all the vaccinations you were forcibly given since birth. How do you do that? You do that by changing your diet and eat as per your blood group as well as per your race. Find your totem. Avoid eating your totem and follow all other traditional taboos connected to your totem. We are alkaline. Therefore, we need alkaline food, not acid, starch-based foods. Alkalize your body, alkalize your blood. How do you do that? You do that by avoiding animal products, by avoiding sugars, starches, and cigarettes, diesel fumes, petrol fumes, too much indoors. You must not stay in indoors for a long time. You must not eat fruit without seeds. You must avoid blood which is in the meat. You must fast regularly and you must think pictorially. Find what your body vibrates to. And that way, you will be able to consume your ancestral beer. How was ancestral beer made? How was proper original beer made? What color is original beer? This is a shock. Beer was made from uh, mixing partially baked bread in ancient times using f uh, 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 flour or uh, grinded uh, paste or, or meal and a yeast to make a mesh. This was then left to ferment over time seven days and then strained through sieves into large vats. Beer came in two forms. Red beer was the most popular, while black beer was much stronger and drank less. You must drink black beer made from the system that I have already explained, as well as long as your body adopts to it. One giant last key in a super secret diet steps is your identity. During ancient times in which we ate the primary we ate primarily vegetarian diet common to all higher primates, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and other brain health diseases 
were not even there. All our body organs gave us optimum health and a long, sweet life. Our blood was alkaline, not acidic. You can find this, and there are a lot of explanation about this diet on the website that is shown there. Committee Hebrew Ethics began with the goal in some three years ago of desiring to live over 125 years. That is still our goal. It's not by faith, nor technology, but by activating knowledge of your self-identity buried in your ancestral identity. This gives us spiritual power, gives us spirit power. Who are you matters most. Thank you, this ancient African eating for sweet old age. Linjan Mashabezul, Prestige Rabbi Elem Dumizulu of Hamiti Hebrew Ethics. Subscribe today and let us walk this walk together and live a long, sweet, old life. Thank you. Goodbye.